In this video, I want to go through how I provision Linux VMs in my home lab with Terraform and Proxmox. I've installed Proxmox, which I use for virtualization, on an ASRock DeskMeet PC, which has a 12-core Intel CPU, 4 terabytes of SSD storage, and 128 gigs of memory. This enables me to spin up and run several VMs comfortably in my home lab. I then use Terraform, which is an infrastructure as code tool to quickly deploy, configure, or destroy VMs, which I use for deploying applications or Kubernetes clusters. Terraform works by declaring the desired state of your infrastructure in the form of YAML code. This enables us to quickly and easily spin up or spin down entire infrastructures. Terraform integrates with many environments, including cloud providers like Amazon Web Services and Google Cloud Platform. It also has support for several virtualization platforms like VMware and Proxmox. Today we are going to install Terraform and use it to spin up some VMs in a Proxmox server. Of course, to follow along with this tutorial, you will need to have a virtualization server. It does not have to be a spec out machine. Any machine you have around with enough storage and capable of running a few VMs will do. To install Proxmox, head over to the Proxmox website and under Downloads, download the Proxmox VE ISO installer. Once downloaded, you can flash the ISO image onto a USB flash drive to create a bootable disk. You can now boot from the bootable disk and follow through the instructions to install Proxmox on your server. Once the installation is complete, you should be able to access Proxmox via its web interface. So now that we have a Proxmox server up and running, let's make sure also that we have Terraform installed on our local machine. The Terraform website details several ways to install the CLI client on your machine depending on the operating system you are using. I'm using macOS so I'll use brew to install. Typing brew install terraform in a terminal should go ahead and install the terraform CLI client. And in my case, there's nothing to do since I have it already installed. Once installed, type terraform and hit enter to ensure it installed correctly. So now that we have our virtualization server and terraform set up, we can go ahead and start provisioning our VMs. Since we are provisioning Linux VMs, we will of course require a Linux cloud image. A cloud image is essentially a snapshot of a VM pre-installed with a best Linux distro and some standard applications and packages. Using cloud images makes it easy to quickly bring up Linux VMs in the cloud. We can also use cloud init to further configure and initialize the cloud image during boot. We will see how we can use cloud init to configure our cloud image in a bit. All of the major Linux distros have cloud images that you can download and use. In our project today, we will use the Debian 11 cloud image, which can be downloaded from cloud.debian.org. We will also create a Proxmox VM template based on this cloud image. And this will be the VM template we will clone to create any number of Debian 11 VMs. So let us get started creating a VM template by SSHing into the Proxmox server. Now we head over to cloud.debian.org and select bullseye, then latest to see the latest Debian 11 cloud images. From there, we can download one of the QCOW2 cloud images, depending on the environment you are deploying to. In our case, we will download the generic AMD64 image for deploying to machines with x86-64 or 64-bit systems. We can right-click on this image and copy the link address, then head back to the Proxmox shell and use wget to download the image to the Proxmox server. After the image is downloaded, we need to install libguest fs tools, which is a utility used for accessing and modifying virtual machine disk images to enable us make some changes to the image. We can install libguest fs tools using this command. Once we have libguest fs tools installed, we can now use vart customize to install the QMU guest agent package inside the virtual machine disk image. The QMU guest agent is a service that runs inside the guest operating system and allows communication and coordination with the virtualization host. I will have all the commands and the code for today's project, including a readme file, linked down in the description. 
We can now use QM, which is a Proxmox tool for managing VMs to create our Debian 11 VM template. We run the following command to create a new virtual machine with ID 9003 named Debian 11 Cloud Init template with two gigabytes of memory and two CPU cores connected to the VMBR0 bridge network interface. We import the disk image we downloaded earlier into local LVM storage using the following command. We configure the virtual machine to use the imported disk as its primary disk. Set the SCSI controller type to VOTIO SCSI PCI. Set the boot order to boot from the primary disk SCSI 0. Attach the CloudInit ISO image to the virtual machine's IDE interface. The CloudInit image is where we store our user-defined configurations such as network settings, user accounts, SSH keys, and other customizations, which will be applied to the virtual machine upon boot. We also enable the serial console for the virtual machine, which enables us to view the VM console on the web interface. Enable the Proxmox VE guest agent to improve communication between the guest and host. And finally, we create the template based on the configured virtual machine. If we head over to the Proxmox web UI, we should see our new VM template created and ready to use. At this point, we have set up a Proxmox server, created a brand new Debian based VM template and installed Terraform on our machine. So it is now time to start building our Terraform project. But before we can do that, we need to make sure Terraform can connect to our Proxmox server. And to do that, we will use a Terraform provider. A Terraform provider is a plugin that enables Terraform to interact with a specific infrastructure platform or service. We will use the Telmet Proxmox provider to enable us to interact with and deploy infrastructure to our Proxmox server. One thing to keep in mind is that at the time of this recording, the Telmet Proxmox provider is still a growing community project, which still has some limitations. It is still though one of the better Terraform providers out there for working with Proxmox and for our purposes as well, it will do just fine. For more information on how to use this provider, you can check out the Proxmox provider's documentation. In order to get started, we'll need to create a new Terraform role with a list of privileges and a new Terraform user, which will then map to the Terraform role. While still logged onto the Proxmox shell, we will use these commands below to do that. Make sure to replace secure1234 with a strong and secure password of your choice. On our local machine, we can export these environment variables to save the credentials on our machine, which will grant Proxmox access to the Terraform client. We can now create a new empty directory on our local machine and start building out our Terraform project score. First, we create a provider.tf file which will contain our provider information. We then start off by defining a variable called PM API URL of type string to store the URL of the Proxmox VE API. Don't worry, we'll see how to set the actual values for these variables in a bit. By using variables, we can make our Terraform configuration more flexible and reusable. In this case, the PM API URL variable allows us to specify the Proxmox API URL dynamically, so we can set and use different URLs for different servers. In the next section of the file, we specify the required providers, which in our case we will name Proxmox. We also set the version of the provider and the name of the plugin. This block will tell Terraform to automatically install and manage the correct version of the provider. In the final section, we configure the Proxmox provider API URL using the previously defined PM API URL variable. We can now create a Terraform TFVars file to store the values of our project's variables. Uh, Terraform uses the Terraform.tfvars file to define variables for our Terraform configuration. This file also allows us to set specific values for variables that are used throughout our Terraform code. So here we can set the value for PM API URL variable we declared in the providers.tf file and set its value to the Proxmox API URL for our server. At this point, we can initialize our Terraform project by running Terraform init. And if we configured everything correctly, we should get a successful initialization. So now that we have an initialized project, it is time to define our infrastructure in a main.tf file. 
Again, we begin by declaring several variables that will be used throughout our Terraform configuration. The cloud init template name represents the name of the cloud init template. Proxmox node specifies the name of the Proxmox node and SSH key stores my machine's SSH public key, which we will use in our VMs to enable public key access. The sensitive equal true attribute ensures that the value of the SSH key variable is treated as sensitive and is not displayed in logs or outputs. The next section of the file defines a Proxmox VM resource using the Proxmox VM QMU block. Here a Proxmox VM resource named k one is defined. The count of three attribute indicates that three instances of this resource will be created. Within the resource block, various settings and configurations are specified such as the VM name, target node, clone source, enabling the Proxmox guest agent, specifying the OS types as cloud init, setting the CPU and memory specifications, defining the disk configurations, and configuring the network settings. The lifecycle block with ignore changes allows Terraform to ignore changes to the network configuration during updates to prevent unnecessary recreation of the VM. Additionally, IP configuration, name server configuration, and the SSH public key are provided as part of the resource definition, with the SSH key being referenced from the var.ssh key variable. Again, we can edit the terraform.tfvars file and set the additional variables we just declared. Please remember to keep this file safe, preferably only on your local machine, and avoid sharing it along with the other project files as it contains sensitive information. Now our Terraform project should be ready to go. We can run the Terraform plan command, which will display an overview of all the resources that are about to be deployed. And if you're happy with this, we can go ahead and deploy the infrastructure by running the Terraform apply command. This should take a few minutes to complete, depending on the number of VMs you are deploying and the resources available on your Proxmox server. We can also take a look at the Proxmox web UI to see the deployment as it happens. And you can see our VMs being created. The logs also show the cloning, configuration, and setup process. Once our infrastructure is successfully deployed, we can SSH into one of the VMs to verify successful installation. First VM in the list should have this IP address as we configured earlier. And that's it, we have now deployed a set of freshly installed Linux VMs, which we can now use to install applications or deploy Kubernetes clusters. Don't forget to check out the Git project in the description below and leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Please consider subscribing and I will see you in the next one.